everybody. Uh, this is chapter eight from the IT Fundamentals Plus U61 All in One Exam Guide presented by Total Seminars, written by Scott Jernigan and Mike Myers. We are going to be dealing with managing files today, and there's a lot involved in this chapter. So feel free to go back and review anything that you need um, to look at. I'll try to also give you some visual aids so you can kind of see what we're talking about. Well, we're really talking about the file and folder structure within um, Windows computer. We are going to do a little bit with Mac and a little bit with Linux, uh, just kind of pointing out some things from the slides, but I'll show you some uh, prime examples from a Windows 10 computer as well. Our chapter objectives uh, today for chapter eight is that we will learn how to manage file storage, manipulate files and folders, as well as protect files. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is managing file storage. And we will also get into file management tools, navigating a file structure, and file and folder properties. All these things we're going to go into in a little bit more detail throughout the rest of uh, throughout, um, this slideshow, throughout this PowerPoint. First, understanding folders and paths. Now, it's important that we understand that data is stored in drives, whether it be an internal hard drive, an external hard drive, or even just like a flash drive or anything like that. They're stored in a specific drive. When you deal with a Windows computer, your internal hard drive is typically going to be named drive C, your C drive, and that's where things are going to be um, stored into. Drives are divided into volumes or partitions, and these volumes are usually named with a letter. And again, the main letter for a Windows computer is such as the C drive. <clears throat> the OS uses folders in each of these volumes as storage units, and files go into those folders. So if you look over here, this is kind of a folder tree. Uh, you can see that the main drive right here is the C drive, and then these main, there's actually five main uh, folders within the C drive. There's apps, drivers, program files, program files times 86, and user. And then it's a little bit indented here. So this is a folder within the user's drive, which is called Mike. And then there's another indentation, and these are folders within the Mike drives. Contacts, desktop, documents is not a folder, that's actually a file. And then there's um, projects and downloads. And down here on the bottom, I went ahead and wrote out what a path would look like. This represents where you would find a specific file or folder within, um, within your computer. So this shows the C drive first, and then the first folder, which is called the root directory. The very first folder within a drive is considered the root directory, and this is the users folder. And then slash john slash itf plus, these are all folders and folders and folders, slash chapter eight, still a folder, slash slideshow.ppt. Now this right here, this last one is a file. So going back through this again, C is considered your drive. The first folder in the drive would be users, that's considered the root directory. Going back up here, apps, drivers, program files, program files times 86, and users, these are all root directories. These are all the first folder within a drive. All five of these are root directories. In this example over here, users is my root directory. And then folder, 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 finally, file. And we know it's a file because they give you a little bit of an extension here at the end, .ppt. We'll have a chapter dedicated to extensions so you can know what this means. PPT in this case stands for PowerPoint. And that's what we're looking at right now, the PowerPoint presentation for chapter eight. Now, please understand that each successive folder is contained within the folder before it. So users contains the folder John. John contains the folder ITF+. ITF+, contains the folder chapter eight, and chapter eight contains the file slideshow PPT. Now there's some file management tools that we can talk about. In Windows, we would use something called either Windows Explorer or File Explorer. And this is the box that you can see over here on the right. And I'm gonna bring up my own box too so I can kind of manipulate it for you and you can see what it is. But there's some main parts that are important. Uh, we do have a, the files pane is the big area here in the middle. This is where all the files are located, whether they're folders or actually files. Over here on the left side, this is considered a navigation pane. 
This is where you can easily navigate to another destination if you want. You can scroll up and scroll down and open these folders and see more and more and then go exactly where you want to go. And those files will show up here in the main area. This right here, this is considered the address bar. Now, right now, these are clickable links. The OSC is a clickable link. You'll take the main C drive. The users is a clickable link. The mic's a clickable link. The documents is a clickable link. All of these are clickable. You can also see the path when you click off of it. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. You do have a back button and a forward button. The back button takes you back to where you just were. And the forward button uh, takes you forward to where you just where you want to go or where you were before. Now, this area up here at the top, you've got a lot of different um, things that you can select from. This is considered the ribbon in a Windows computer. So when any time they mention the word ribbon, they're talking about this extra part here at the top where you can do some, some other options. And then finally, you do have a search box over here on the side where you can search for a specific document. If you had a whole bunch, if you had hundreds of documents in this file pane, you could search for it and it would narrow it down as well. Now, for a Mac computer, they use something called Finder. It's kind of like what we just looked at with Windows Explorer and uh, File Explorer, but uh, this is a Mac computer and they use Finder and they have the same thing. You have a navigation pane over here on the side. You've got a back button and a forward button. You can change the view of how you want to look at the things that you have. You can sort it by a certain um, criteria. You have certain actions and then you can send or add tags or search. And finally for Linux, uh, they offer some different uh, file management tools as well, but this is files in Ubuntu Unity. And again, you can see the same thing. You've got your navigation pane, you have your, your files pane, you've got some search and view options over here. Very similar looking, but a little bit different. Before we go on to this, let me show you a quick example of one that I already have pulled up. This is my file explorer. Again, you can see I've got a lot of different files here available. These are all picture files. Over here is my navigation pane, and these are the things that you can also add to it. If there's a certain one that you wanna make sure you always go to, you can easily add to this just by simply grabbing something and dragging it over to this place, um, especially when they're folders and things. As I mentioned up here, this is my address bar. Now, right now, as I mentioned, these are clickable links. So if I click on one of these, I will go exactly where I think. Right here, if I go to day 15, chapter eight, it'll take me to the day 15, chapter eight things. And then I can go into where I just was, which was pictures. Now, if I click off of that, it turns it into a path. As you can see, C slash users slash JTabor slash desktop slash Tabor lesson plan slash blah, blah, blah. And these are all folder, 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 folders. And then when I click on one, this is this particular file within that folder or within that path. The other thing to make note is that when you do have a path like this, there are these slashes that separate folders and files and folders from other folders. We want to make sure that we use a backslash, and this is a backslash going uh, using what we have. So make sure you use that type of slash and not the other one. This one is located usually above the enter button on your computer um, instead of the one with your question mark. Actually, I'm not sure if it's backslash or forward slash. I'm going to have to look into that. But it's this one kind of leaning backward. All right, navigating a folder structure. Uh, the e this is the easiest way to navigate to a folder is to click on it in the navigation pane. This is what your navigation pane would look like, and you can easily navigate to a certain folder in that navigation pane by clicking on it. Uh, and your Windows will offer fairly standard folders within this. If, if you don't add anything else, you'll have downloads, you'll have documents, and you'll have pictures. These are things that will automatically be there, but then you can add new ones to it if you want to. The next thing that we're going to talk about in detail is file and folder properties. Now, properties enable the OS to store and retrieve these files and folders. And we're going to go into details of basic file attributes, advanced file attributes, folder attributes, file size, and keywords. Again, the OS enables you to view and modify these properties, and we're also talk about how to, how to go through and change these. And I'll show you some pictures on the slideshow, plus some real-life um, examples as well. So the first thing we want to talk about are the basic file attributes. Now, the basic file attributes are um, read-only, system, hidden, and archive. These basic file attributes are considered yes-no values for a file. You either turn them on or you turn them off. 
that's it. There's no in between. There's no modification. There's no in. There's no uh, you know halfway. It's either on or off. So for read only, if you make a document or a file read only, it is unchangeable. You can read the file, but if you ever change it, you have to save it under a different name. It's going to protect the original file from change. So if you make something a read-only file, you can look at it, but not change it. And if they do let you change it, it will force you to, to rename it and save it as a new copy. System is something you don't even want to go to. Uh, it's usually hidden by default, and it's protected from accidental deletion. If something, as soon as you create something, it becomes a system file. Now you can go in there and you can uncheck it, but then it pretty much just disappears, and it's not a system file anymore. So you, it's always hidden by default, and that's not something you typically want to change. Uh, hidden is where the file, if you turn it on, then the file is hidden from the view of Windows Explorer or File Explorer. There's a way to go into settings where you can see hidden files. I know it seems counterintuitive, but you can see it. It'll be a little bit grayer than what it would be or a little bit faded than what the other files look like. But if you don't see the hidden files, if you turn that off, then it will completely be gone. It'll look like it's not even there. But that's one way that you can protect your file by hiding it. And then finally, you have archive. This is used by backup software to determine if a file is new or changed. Whenever you back up files, typically it doesn't back up everything. Now, it does the very first time, but then after that, it's only going to back up things that are different. Because if it backed up everything every single time, that just takes a lot of time and a lot of um, computer processing power to be able to do that. So it's only going to go through and it's going to find the things that have been changed since the last backup and back those up. And that's what archive is. As soon as a software, a piece of file or folder has been changed, it will mark it as an archived file and it will find those markings and only back those up. Uh, before we go into this, let's go ahead and show you how to, how to access these bio, uh, basic file attributes. If I go into my Windows Explorer, uh, I can find those. I'm just going to pick pick any one of these copies. If I right click and then go down to properties at the very bottom, you can see that this is where a lot of properties are. And then down here near the bottom of this properties, it says attributes. And they only have those two ones that really could be changed by you. You have read only. And then by doing that, you won't be able to change that file at all. It'll stay the same or hidden. Now this is mostly not dealt with pictures. I mean, you can modify pictures, but a lot of dealing with uh, Word documents, um, word processing documents or other things like that. And then you can also do hidden. If I turn on hidden and hit okay, then that file will disappear. It is still there. It just can't be seen through all that, but that's how you access it. You right click and you click on properties down here at the bottom. Now, your computer can uh, save, has a different file systems depending on what kind of computer and OS that you're using, whether it's Windows or Apple's or Linux. If it's a Windows, uh, it used to use what we call FAT32. That was an older version, but it did not offer any of the advanced attributes that we're going to be talking about here in a minute. So now most Windows computers uses something called NTFS. Uh, this is a current version, and it does offer the advanced attributes, which makes things a little bit better for the Windows system. For Apple, it's called HFS and HFS+, and then for Linux, it's called EXT4. Now, we talked about the basic file attributes. These are the advanced file attributes, and only available when you use the NTFS. Uh, you can index a file, and what that means is that files can be searched, but sometimes whenever you search for a file, it can take a long time. If you index a file, it can speed up the search. So typically, most files are going to be indexed by default unless you decide to turn that off, if you want, don't want it to be found during a search. Uh, the OS tracks files by their contents and enables a faster search if you index it. Journaling uses a transla transaction log to write activity in either Windows, uh, Mac, or Linux. It can feature reduced data loss in the event of some sort of unexpected shutdown. So it will keep it going. If you ever have, have a pro program or a computer that's shut down because of a power outage or anything before, you just lost whatever you were working on if you didn't save it. 
and now this will continue to keep it on its uh, keep the activity log going in the hard drive so that way you won't have that loss being um, of your data in case of a shutdown. Compressed files can typically take up less space on the volume if you compress them together and you can either compress a file or a folder but it takes all the contents that's on it and you can squish them together uh, and but you do need to uncompress them for a normal use. And this is typically uh, handy whenever you're trying to send a file through an email or through a program and you don't have a lot of room, you don't have, you have a certain limit of how much, um, how big of a file size that you can send. So compressing them will help kind of make it smaller and then the other person can um, open it up and uncompress it and see it in its entirety. And then finally encrypted. Uh, another user on the computer cannot access a file if it's encrypted. They're going to possibly see the file unless you hide it. They're going to see it, but when they open it up, it will be protected, it will be encrypted, and only you, the person who encrypted it, can see it, uh, uh, and not, the, not anybody else who could possibly get into your computer. Let me show you where these are um, on your um, you know, Windows computer. Again, I still do the same thing. I right-click on File, I go down to Properties, and then down the bottom where we talked about read only and hidden, over here on the side right next to that, it says advanced. If I click on advanced, you're gonna see the things that we talked about. This one has the archiving. This one allows the context to be indexed. You can compress your contents here and you can encrypt the contents here. Uh, the journaling is typically an automatic thing that happens, but all the others have to be chosen. Now, file and folder properties, we're going to talk about um, uh, these, these now. So folder attributes, whatever we just talked about for read-only and hidden and encryption and indexing and compressing, those we're dealing with files, and you can do the same thing with folders. If you had an entire folder of, of items, if I wanted to go in here and I wanted to encrypt every single one of these items, I don't have to do each one individually. That would take forever. So what I would do is I would find the folder that it's that all of those are located in, and I could right-click the folder and go down to properties, and I can do read-only or hidden or encrypted or compressing and things like that. So I can do it for the entire folder instead of in individual files. It will help save uh, same time so that way you can do them all at once. File size properties is exactly what it sounds like. If you go into any kind of um, uh, any kind of file and you want to find out the properties of it, again, I just right click, I go down to properties. This is where the attributes were located, but you can see a lot of other things as well. You can see what type of file that it is, what the name of the file is, what type it is. This is a PNG file, which is a picture file. It, you can open it and you can change how it opens according to a, a program on your computer. You can see where it's located. This is the path that we talked about. Uh, you can see the size of how big it is and the size on the disk, when it was created, modified, accessed, and then I get our attributes. So that's where all the properties are, which is really great. It kind of gives you some basics about um, some different files that you have. And then there are keywords um, that are involved, and these are details that are assigned to a file so you can easily search for them. You can tag using a subject or the author's name or categories or comments, uh, but some files can store additional information as well. This is an example over here of a picture. You can see the camera type of where, where it was taken, where it was, uh, where it was taken, uh, what kind of details about the shot that it was taken, and, and things like that. Viewing and modifying properties. As I mentioned before, all you need to do is right click and click properties, and then you'll come to this box that you would see according to your file. And you can change any of those attributes. You can check the advanced button so that way you can press or encrypt, but that's all, all right there for you to do, deal with. There are some other tabs up here for security and details and previous versions. Uh, really, general is going to be the, mo the biggest one that you need to make sure you understand for the U61 exam. Details isn't bad either. Let's go look into that real quick. If I right click on a file, hit properties, this automatically is going to give me the general tab. If I go over to details, it's going to give me again more properties, more details of that particular one. Some of these are editable, while others are not. 
The next section we want to talk about is how you can manipulate files and folders. Uh, learning how you can open, edit, and save files, how you can move and copy folders, how you can select multiple files and folders, talking about drag and drop or cut and paste. You can move to and copy to, rename, deleting, undeleting, and the rest of these. So we're going to talk about all of these different things in this next section. First, let's talk about opening, editing, and saving files. Now, most of us understand how to do that, but you can do really open a file in three different ways. You can just simply select open, you can double click on a file, or you can double click on a shortcut. All of those will do the same thing and allows you to open a file or a folder. Uh, some applications will allow you to edit and save. The, the best way to save a file is either hit, click uh, File Save, or if you want to use a hotkey, it would be Control S. Moving and copying, it's important to make sure we know this. We talked about this in a previous video. Remember, moving is like, uh, is like cutting. It's taking a file from one place and relocating it to another place. You're putting the contents into a new folder and you're deleting contents from the old folder. It does that all at once. However, if you wanted to copy, you're putting the content in a new folder, but you're leaving the content in the old folder. You're, you're basically making a second version of that particular file. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can use a drag and drop where you literally pick, you literally click on one of them, you hold down uh, the, the clicker, and then you move it over to where you want to go. Uh, depending on what you're doing, you're either going to be move, you're either going to be copying or cutting. Uh, it just depends on what we have. And I'm going to go through these real quick so you understand what is what. Uh, sorry, let's go back to here. Control versus shift. If I am moving, let's say we have a C drive and I have two folders in my C drive and I want to move a copy, then what I will do is I will just pick it, I will click on one, I'll hold it down, and I'll drag it over to another one. And that will move it if it's within the same drive or the same volume. However, if I wanted to um, copy a file, I would want to make sure I click down the, the control button. And then if I hold control button and click and drag, it will actually cut and paste the excuse me, it will actually copy it. So instead of moving a file, it will copy the file if I hold down the control button. Now that is if I'm in the same drive. So again, two folders in the C drive. If I have two folders that are in different drives, such as my C drive and then my Google drive, which is somewhere offline or somewhere offsite, then I would want to do the opposite. If you drag and drop from my C drive to my Google drive, it will automatically copy it. But if I wanted to move it, if I wanted to cut and paste, I would then hold down shift. So within the same volume, we hold down control. Uh, but if it's in a different volume, we hold down shift. Now drag and drop is one way that you can do it. Uh, you can also right click and click cut or copy and then eventually do you, you do paste. Uh, or you can go up to the ribbon. The ribbon also has a way that you can do that up here where you can cut, copy, and paste. Remember, copy is control C, uh, cut is control X, and paste is control V. You can also use hotkeys to do that as well. When you do that, remember, it's, they save it to a clipboard, which is a temporary holdings place as you copy, copy cut, or paste. And then when you relocate it, it then uh, is use, it goes from your clipboard onto the place where you're sending it. Before we talk about how to, how to uh, select multiple contiguous or non-contiguous files, let's make sure we understand what those words mean. A contiguous file are if we're trying to move files that are grouped together. Non-contiguous files are moving files that are not grouped together. Let me give you an example. If a contiguous files in this example right here would be, let's say we want to do this one, we want to do these, these nine, okay? We want to do this one all the way down to this one. Now, if I wanted to copy all those, I can just grab, I can just drag a little box around those, and those would be contiguous because they're all next to each other, and that's one way that you can do it. Another contiguous way of doing it is, let's say I wanted to go from this first one 
all the way to just this one. But I wanted this entire top row and then all the way to here. And I can't use a box to do that because it doesn't include these two. Or I can't use a box to do it here because it doesn't include these four. So if I want to do that, I would highlight or select the very first one. I'm reading the directions over here, contiguous files. I would select the first one. I would hold down my shift key and then I would select the last one. And notice how it highlighted every single one of these. And that way I'm selecting it and I can then go through. I can right, I can right click, I can cut or copy or delete or whatever I'm trying to do to these problems, uh, these files. Now that's when they're contiguous. They're either in a row and they're connected uh, by a box or they're connected by a line or with rows. Now non-contiguous, let's, let's say I wanted this one and the one on this, I wanted the four corners. Okay, I wanted all four of these corners, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I wanted them all to be highlighted at the same time. I can't use a box. A box would highlight all of them. I can't use the shift trick because shift trick was gonna highlight all of them, and that's not good. So if I want non-contiguous files, I select the first one, I hold down the control key, I select each individual one that I want. Now I'm holding the control key down at the entire time. And then I'm just clicking and clicking and moving and clicking the ones that I want. And then boom, these are the four main ones that I want. So if you want a contiguous, you hold down the first one, shift, last one. And it does everything in between. Non-contiguous, first one, control, and then each individual one after that. You can do this with files. You can do this with folders for either one of these. All right, let's talk about renaming files and folders. Uh, you can do a couple different ways to rename that. Let me bring some examples up here so you can see it. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so you can see the words. Uh, let's say I wanted to rename this very first file here. Instead of copy of association, I wanna rename that. Now, one way that you can do it is I can right click and then just simply go down to rename and I can call it picture one. All right, and now it's down here. Oops, I think I did a whole bunch. I still had those contiguous files selected. Let me go back and do it again. I can right click, I can do um, picture one. There we go, there's picture one. Okay, great. Another way that you can do it is you can select the file or folder and press F2. Now this is a shortcut function feature. If I just hit F2, it allows me to change it using, I used uh, F2 that time. Another way is to click on it once and then do it again slowly. I click and then I click. And then you can see, I can then do a slow click. That's another way to change your thing. And then the last one is I can use the home tab in the ribbon. Instead of doing that, I can go up here to my ribbon and I've got an option to rename up here as well. And then I can use the ribbon to rename it. All right, so those are different ways that you can do that. Again, you can do it from the, from the right click menu. You can do it from the, from the ribbon. You can do a slow, click to change it, or you can press, my personal favorite is F2, and then you can go right at it. You can do that with files and folders. The next thing is pretty, um, I think pretty common for most of us is not understanding how to delete. Now, when you delete things, it automatically goes to the recycle bin of your computer. However, there is a way to permanent permanently delete something so it skips the recycle bin and just completely goes away. Now first off, if you wanted to delete something, you can you can select the item and then press the delete key up in the ribbon, oh, excuse me, on your keyboard, or you can right click the item, select delete, or you can go up to the ribbon and select delete. Let's do that real quick. If I had this ribbon one, let's make another copy. I'm going to copy and paste. There's a copy of that ribbon and I say, oh, I don't need that extra one now. So I can right click and click on delete, and it's gonna give me, uh, and then it goes away. It's now actually in my recycle bin. Let's bring it back. I hit my undo button to do that, which is control Z. I can also just cl simply click the delete button on my keyboard, and it would go away. Let's bring it back. Or I could go up, highlight it, I can go up to the ribbon and delete. Now you do have an option. I can either hit delete like this, and it's gone, or back on my options, I've got this little arrow, and if I hit the arrow, you can also permanently delete. 
permanently delete, skips the recycle bin and makes it go away. And you can either permanently delete it like this, it's gonna give you a uh, prompt. Are you sure you wanna permanently delete this file? Sure, let's do it. Control Z. Oh, I can't do it. See what, look what happens when you permanently delete it, I can't control Z and bring it back. So that's fine. I'll just make another copy. Yeah, okay. I'll just make another copy. And you can also do it by hitting Shift Delete. If I hold down Shift and Delete, it's gonna also make a permanently deletion option as well, and I can do it that way. Now again, you, you won't be able to bring things back when you permanently delete it, but that is an option if you just wanna skip the recycle bin. Now you can undelete things, which is kind of what I was doing. I hit Control, uh, control Z for my undo action. That's way to, one way to bring it back. But let's say you did it yesterday and you don't have Control Z, which is your most recent action. Then you would go into your recycle bin, which is what this picture is. You would find the one that you want to bring back you would check it or you'd select it and then up here and then uh, you can also check restore and restore is a way for you to bring it back to where it was first located. You can right click and click restore or I believe it's also up in the ribbon as well. Now it's important when we start looking at our files to understand how we can search or sort or display them. Now, when you search for them, you've got that search box that we talked about up here in this area of your Windows Explorer, and you can type a keyword in the search box in the File Explorer, or you can click the search box to open the advanced features. If you knew you did it during a certain day or during um, a certain period of time, or you knew it was a certain file size, or it started with a certain letter, you can always do that using your advanced option. But if you know what it's called, you can just put it into your search box. So that's one way that you can search for specific items. You can also change the view and you have a couple different view layouts to look at. The view is up here. You'd have to hit the view tab on the very top and then you've got some options. You do have a preview pane, which means you can look at what each one looks like. And then these are the different options that we have here. Now, if it's on a small icon or a list, uh, that's a compact view and that's where you can work with many files at once. Let me show you an example of this real quick. All right, so here's my thing. If, let's go to view, let's do a small icon. So as you can see, these are just all the different things. There's not a lot of information about them, but you can see that I've got all the different names of them on here. Uh, I can also click on list, which will do the same thing. If I click on details, details shows multiple columns of data. I can see the name, I can see the date when it was created, I can see the type of file that it is, and even how big the file is. And if, they were, if they, any of them were tagged, with a certain keyword, I could see that over here as well. I do have then some other ones. I have some medium icons where I can see a little bit of a preview of what each one looks like. I can even make it larger, large icons, and even extra large icons. And as I mentioned before, I've got some navigation pane. So even if I'm in the list where I can't see what each of those files look like, if I hit the preview pane, I can then, and I highlight one, I can see a preview of what it looks like over here. And I can scroll through. If there's a certain one that I wanna look for, I can do it this way as well. So that's a nice way to do it. And then details pane will give me a little bit of a, a preview of what it looks like, plus some details of each one. Now there are some ways that we can protect these files and we mentioned it before, one way is to hide them and that's fine. You can hide a thing, but it doesn't really protect them. It just kind of makes it out of view. And if someone was able to find what you hid, then it's still open for them to do whatever they want. So what we need to do is we need to change permissions on a file. That's one way to protect it. Now what's, it, it depends on whether this is a local file, which means it's on your computer and your computer only, or whether it's a shared file, which means multiple people have access to this. Regardless, what you can do is you can right click and you go to properties, you will hit the security tab this time on the top, and please know that these have different permissions. And the typical permissions that you're gonna use are either full control, which means anybody can do anything with that file, including modify and read it and delete it and, and alter it in any way. Uh, you can make it be modify or you can make it be read only. And read only is the best way to, uh, to allow someone to still have access to it, but to only look at it and not be able to change it. Let me show you how to do that real quick. On my example here, if I pick a, pick a file, I right click, I go to properties, I go to security, and then these are the different options that I have here. And if there's a different person on here, if I don't want 
a certain person to be able to do this, I can go into them and I can click edit and then I can go in and change what these would be. I can change the permissions of a specific person. I can allow or deny each of these. If I, don't, so if I want someone not to have full control, I would deny full control. And you always want to make sure that you're backing up your files as best you can. It's important to do. Uh, you can get some backup software that automatically makes a backup of your files by compressing them into archive files. And then to access these files, you must use the same utility to open them up. That would be a kind of a third party, um, a third party system. You do have backup or what's called file history in Windows 8 and Windows 10. And this is an automatic backup um, file system for a Windows computer. In a Mac, it's called Time Machine. Time Machine is how you can back up uh, files and folders using the pre-existing software on the system and nothing new. You have some other options that you can use for backing up. You can get an external hard drive, and that way every time you're making a change, it's automatically saving it to an external hard drive. And if something happens to your computer, you've got your hard drive to always go for for your backup. You can do some online things or some online storage. Uh, that'd be great as well, uh, such as OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox or iCloud or things like that, which is great. Uh, there's another one called Carbonite. Um, and you do want to make sure you back up quite often. Uh, if it's something you're regularly working with on your computer, I would say, you know, maybe daily at night. If it's something you're not using as much, maybe once a week. If it's not, if it's even less than that, maybe once a month. But I highly recommend that you back up things either weekly or monthly, especially when it's an important data. And if you do have a backup system going on, you can schedule a manual backup, which means you're, uh, you're forcing it to do it, or you can set it to do an automatic backup. Maybe you're not using your computer at three o'clock in the morning on Saturday, Saturday mornings. So you can automatically do it, uh, make sure it's backing up during that time as well. And one of the most important things about backup is that you, if you can, you want backups to be done off-site because if it's on-site where your computer is, uh, I, let's, I don't want to say this, but let's say there's a house fire and you escape, which is great, but your computer doesn't. Unfortunately, your on-site backup is also going to be destroyed as well. So it's important to make sure that um, you do something off-site, such as an online storage would be great. And it's important also, whenever you're doing a backup, that you regularly check that you are uh, that your backup worked. You want to verify that your backup worked so that way you can ensure that you have reliable backup and it's being accurate as well. All right, uh, that's it for chapter eight. Uh, that was again on different ways to manage your files and manage uh, your folders within your um, within a Windows computer, but I touched a little bit on a Mac and a Linux. If you have questions or anything, feel free to put down in the comments down below, or you can go back and look at your, um, look at through the video again on a certain section. Let's go ahead and go through some review questions to see how well you did. This is on chapter eight. Chapter eight questions. Uh, the first one says, number one, which of these is a correctly written file path? And I'll let you read through those. We have option A, B, C, and D. Feel free to pause the video if you want a little bit of time to think through it, and then come up with your answer and resume to see how, you, how it matches up. This is kind of a tricky one. Uh, there's some similarities on every single one of them. They all say C, books, mic, birthdays, dot, txt. So the things that really stand out that are different on these is that some of them use different kind of slashes. And also at the very beginning, you have C colon, and then some things are different there too. Option A says a greater than symbol. Option B has a forward slash. Option, option C has a backslash. And option D has uh, two backslashes. Uh, the answer on number one is option C. This is the correct looking path. It's C colon backslash books slash mic slash birthdays dot txt. Number two, what is a root directory? A, the top level storage location on a volume. B, the folder containing the system files. B, uh, C, the folder containing the boot files. D, the folder containing the signed in user's personal files. 
A root directory is the first location, first folder within a drive or within a volume. So it is A. Number three, what is the file management tool in a Mac OS? That answer would be Finder for a Mac. They don't use Windows Explorer or File Explorer. That's for uh, Windows where we use Finder for a Mac. Number four, which of these is an on-off flag for a file? A, size, B, archive, D, date modified, D, C, date modified, D, date created. The on-off flag is something that you just basically turn on or turn off and there's no in-between. Uh, you do not turn on or off the size of a file. You do not turn on or off when it was modified or when it was created. The only thing that you can turn on and off is the archive status, whether it was changed or stayed the same. So four is B. Five, which file property makes a search faster for content within files? A, archive, B, index, C, compressed, D, encrypted. To make it easier to search, we want to index that particular file. So B, indexed. Number six, what action opens a data file for editing in the application associated with its extension? A, double click, B, right click, C, control click, D, shift click. All it's really asking is which action opens a file and you can edit or do whatever you want with that file, but which one opens it? And of these, the only thing that would open a file is double click. Seven, how do you select multiple non-contiguous files in a file listing? Control click, shift click, double click, right click. If they are non-contiguous, they are not together, and so you want to jump around. In order to jump around, you actually have to do control click. Shift click would be contiguous files, those that are close together or those that are in a row. Number eight, control V is a keyboard shortcut in Windows for what activity? A, copy, B, paste, C, cut, D, delete. Control V is to paste. They don't call it control P because control P is actually a shortcut for print or quick print. Number nine, in File Explorer, from which tab can you select a different view? A, view, B, share, C, details, D, home. Don't make it hard, guys. A, view. And finally, 10, which utility in a Mac OS backs up user files automatically? A, backup, B, file explorer, C, file history, D, time machine. For a Mac OS, the backup software that comes automatically in it is called time machine. In a Windows computer, it is called file history. But the answer for number 10 is Time Machine. All right, thanks for joining us for Chapter 8. Hopefully you learned a little bit about uh, how you can manage files on the different OSs that we've talked about. If you have any questions, again, feel free to put a comment down below. I'm happy to answer anything that you have. And we appreciate you uh, listening to the video series. And we've got more coming up with Chapters 9 through 15 uh, later. Uh, thanks again. And as always, keep on keeping on.